Now we have to animate the focus object because when we turn on depth of field, we want our little dude to be in focus at the right times. So he's in focus at the very beginning because we set the, uh, actually I actually don't even know where the focus object is. I do this really quick. It's just cursor, click where you want it to be focused, shift S, selection to cursor, and it's there. And we gotta go find the keyframe, so here it is. So it doesn't always just do, shift it when it gets to a new cut. So it cuts, and I'll shift it, boom. It's pretty much in the same spot, but I'll shift it anyways to here. And at this digital eight. But this camera actually doesn't have um, depth of field enabled, so let's do that. Click, click this camera. I'm just gonna go through and do it for all the cameras. Scroll down, depth of field, type in focus object, enter, and I think we did 0 0.03, um, camera two, focus object, 0 0.03, camera three. Now let's go back and do this. I'm gonna move this up here, click the focus object, and let's keep going. I want the focus object to be in a this digit doesn't need to be directly on it as long as it's in the distance between the camera that you want. That's all that matters. Digital age. That means protecting more communication signals from enemy separatist radios. Those clankers can never track. But track me now. Thanks to Nord. Nord V. VPN. With Nord, Nord VPN. With Nord VPN devices up to a top. What com device I'm using? But Nord VPN. And once you do that, your entire scene is completed. And now it's time to do the painfully long process of rendering it out. There's a million different render settings, and even I, the genius that I am, don't know all of them, because in fact, I'm not a genius. Here's what I do. Light paths, I kind of turn down to six. Clamping, I do to five. No motion blur, nothing else. I leave 1920 by 180, 100%. Then there's FPS. I animated this whole thing at 24 FPS, and I'm only now realizing that I don't actually want 24 FPS. I forgot to do this. Choose your FPS before you start animating. I normally do 12 because it's less frames to render, but if you do 24, then it, it, it'll default to 24. But that's just double the frames you have to render. But I want it to be 12, so I'm gonna change it to 12. But we have a problem now, because if I go back and I watch this, then at this, with NordVPN, I can encrypt my data. It's two times as slow. It's essentially in slow motion. That's a problem. You could scale the keyframes, but then that messes up the camera bindings that I've done. And if there's a keyframe that's directly next to one another, like here, then it'll just merge them together and it just screws everything up. So make sure you always choose your, your uh, FPS before you start animating. But in my case, <clears throat> since I'm done everything, I'm not going to make any edits. I'll just do this quick and easy fix, which is time stretching. This is the old, old mapping of the frames and when the new mapping of the frames. I want it to be twice as fast. So I'll just change this to 50. So for every, 100 frames that used to be now it only plays 50 so it's twice as fast and now if i play this I'm trooper it's my duty to protect the republic at all costs it's back to where it was except the timeline's freaking really weird because of this stretching and you can't really edit things and it gets really painful so do not do that unless you absolutely have to like in my case so i'm going to save this and i'm going to render it out if you still have those render settings and you're good to go i'm just going to i'm going to add a few things i'm going to add a lens distortion node and I'm going to change it to somewhere around 0 0.02 and then 0 0.03. That's usually a pretty good value. It's fairly heavy, but I kind of like that distortion that it gives. And that's about all that I will add. You can go pretty heavy with the compositor. I don't really like to. I'll just do that in the editor instead. What else, do, what else am I missing here? Don't think anything. You just choose your output. Make sure you find your folder that you would do it in. Put it into one single folder that doesn't have anything else in it and render it as a PNG or an image. Render it as some kind of image. I would suggest PNG, you could go, don't do JPEG, do PNG. You could go like TIFF, I don't even know. Like this, in the industry they do, they have a OpenEXR, they're like higher quality, but in our case, PNG will work just fine. 
the reason that you do this and not a video is because if the render crashes halfway through, you can just pick up from where you left off. But if a video crashes, then it's gone and you have to start over. And rendering takes a really long time. You can start and stop as much as you want and you'll be fine. So just go through to double check everything before you start rendering and determine the max samples. Just do a few test renders and see what the samples you need are. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do that actually. Let's render one. Now it's rendered. It did the denoising so you can't actually tell how much noise there was but if you go up to composite and click view layer you can see what the frame was originally. That's an all right amount of noise. You could be okay with that but since it only took 53 seconds to render this i'm going to bump it up i'm probably just going to do 200 instead of 100 and i'm going to see what that looks like now i'm also going to change his face let's do that here is the 200 sample render now it took almost double the length well actually more than double the length there's still quite a bit of noise i'll probably go a little bit higher just because i can oh um i also usually change the tiling size to 256 because apparently according to google that's the best tiling size for a gpu if you're rendering on a CPU, I think it's smaller. It's better like 64 by 64 or 32 by 32. Um, but don't listen to me. I would probably suggest doing a little bit of research for sure. All right, <clears throat> I just did 300. Let's see how this looks. Pretty good. I'll probably leave it at that. This lighting is pretty crappy, <laughs> but I'm fine with it. Uh, we'll just turn this back on. Good. I might turn down the scratches and stuff in the Mechabricks fingerprints. Let's do that real quick. Just open this up. Mechabricks scratches to like five. Fingerprints to 10 is what I usually do. Dents to like 15. Yeah, I might play with the lighting a little bit more, but other than that, we're done. You export it out, you render, you wait for 17 years. Once you have all of your PNG images, simply open your editing software of choice and import them as an image sequence and make sure you specify uh, the frame rate to be the frame rate that you chose to animate your scene at in Blender. And that's everything. And you have yourself an Oscar winning 3D Lego animated movie in which you made without the use of real Lego. It's a beautiful thing. I hope to see a bunch of uh, epic Lego animations in the near future.